Okay, so, fuck yes. Welcome to After the Hype. I'm here, host, always Brian Russell. With me, as always, Jonathan Hardesty and Hi. Emily Blake. Hello. Uh, sad news. I know we were on a, a long hiatus, <laughs> and we're all excited to all be back, and then Sam had to go and get sick. So, speedy recovery to Sam, but because of that, she will not be on this week, and Chewie will not be on next week, which is a bummer. But they will be back after that when Emily's no longer here because yep. of scheduling. <laughs> so. I'm, on a, I'm on a shoot for the entire <laughs> month of February, every Saturday. So, we will have a bit of a rotating door of our co-host for the first little quarter ish of uh 2019 but everything's gonna be okay it's not a right? bug it's a feature <laughs> it's a good way to put it yeah 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 <laughs> the there's also a chance i'll be on something at the end of january so i might be missing another saturday as well that's okay <laughs> we'll we'll figure it out well we'll try to get like if you could get a cardboard cut out of you yes oh yeah Oh, so and then just, just, little, just audio recordings. You can push a button. And it'll be like, oh, my fucking God. Yeah, yeah exactly. I, God damn it, you guys. Actually, we, I, lis- I listen to a fantasy podcast, and whenever one of the three hosts can't make it, they have a cardboard cutout bear that sits in the person's chair. <laughs> we that's have out a there. bear. We have a bear. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then all we need is a voice. And, uh, and a staple of marshmallow. I'll just man. record yeah. some pre record. I'll just record some things, and you can yeah. just have oh, it. Oh, this is on video, isn't this? It's uh, the part of it. Part of it. The okay. part that the you'll part be. That yeah. you yeah. gotta <laughs> say words. That I'm the center of? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're technically like either you're to the little to the left of. Oh, okay. In yeah. frame was anyway. Oh, a little to the left. There'll be okay. like 3D numbers. Oh next my god, to you. you are an actor. You just did the high I'm handsome face. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that's what yeah. I call, that's what I call it when I'm a yeah. monitor. When an you actor think, just looks I, at the camera and you're like, hi. I'm you handsome. think I grew this beard to be ironic? No. <laughs> I just assume you're taking you, up a new career of lumberjacking. I, I, oh god. You I'm, I've it, been working on a joke about that actually. I'm sure. <laughs> you grew it to be Chris Evans. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh. I, I rewatched uh, Infinity War just yesterday, actually. And when he comes out of the shadows, I was like, "God, I do look like him." Like, like, no, because like he has this like side on his beard where it's like it. I have this cut that doesn't fully grow. Yep. It's one of these sides. It's this side right here. And then I was watching. I was like, he has the same cut. And I was like, this is uncomfortable. Like, I'm not fanboying, but I'm fanboying. It's fine. I just love knowing that anybody from our high school who just listened to that went. Oh, yeah. Everybody hates me. It's fine. It's good. Right. Everybody's rolling their eyes. Let's do a where have you been doing. And we've been gone for a while. So if you have more than one, that's fine. Just try to keep them trim as much as possible. I will go really quick. I saw Into the Spider-Verse, which Emily's already talked about on this podcast. It's awesome. She was right. Um, and I saw Aquaman, which I'm sure not a lot of people here have seen it, but everyone in the world is fucking seeing it, which is really cool. I loved the hell out of it, but of course I did. I'm a DC fanboy. Um and I will definitely bring it under this podcast once it hits DVD to go into more why I loved it. But basically, I loved it because it's so far, in my opinion, the only comic book movie that has been written like a comic book. And that's dialogue, pacing, everything. It's basically seven, I think six or seven comic books into one stack, and that's your story. And I think that was awesome and very, very well done, and I loved the hell out of it. And I think everyone should see it, but that's my opinion. Next. All right, cool. Uh, so... Thanks to the Samwise podcast, I uh, got a real itch over the holiday and up to now to rewatch the Lord of the Rings extended editions. It also Ooh. helped I got the Blu-rays of those for Christmas. Sam will be so happy to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> and so we are in the first half of Return of the King now. Or we just finished the first half. So we've made it through most of it already. Oh, so you just have the ending. You just have the ending. Yeah. The, the couple <laughs> different endings, yes. Yeah. And man, that thing still holds up. I love Lord of the Rings so much. and It's great. The, it's watching really it again good. makes me remember that. Like, yeah, it, it's been a long time since I've seen it too. I think every rewatch, I like Return of the King a little bit less, but otherwise, I still think it's fantastic. Just the yeah, the, la- the scene. It's hard it. when you go from Two Towers. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Like and Two Towers when it first came out wasn't my favorite, and now it's like ooh, that's yeah. tough to follow. Yeah. In the in the theater in Return of the King, with the end of the movie when he goes, but the story wasn't over. Somebody in the theater went, oh really? <laughs> That reminds me of uh, Into the Spider Verse. At the end, there's an explosion, and it's not a very big one. And yeah. some kid in the back was like, "That's not a big explosion." <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "It was the best cap of the movie." But yeah, so Lord of the Rings, good stuff. Cool. Emily, what about you? Uh, I've been uh, in 2019. I want to up my Dungeons and Dragons game, so uh, I'm kind. I'm serious. <laughs> um, so I've created a new character that I'm about to start playing. It's the Dragonborn Warden. Pretty rad. 
Um, and I've been reading the monster manual because my character like is really like into, uh, she's writing a book about monsters. So she has to be really knowledgeable. So I was like, well, if Valani is really knowledgeable, then Emily should also be really knowledgeable. So I'm literally reading the monster manual cover to cover. The monster manual is a really fun read. It is a really fun read. You're like, holy shit, everything is cool. Look at all Um, the stuff that they took from. (laughs) Yeah. yeah, Also that. Um, but what I really want to talk about is I've also been listening to Critical Role, which most, if you know Dungeons and Dragons, you already know Critical Role. It's a, uh, it's. It's a show on Geek and Sundry and also a podcast uh, chronicling the the campaigns of these uh, voice actors. Um, and I started, uh, it's been, a, there's a million episodes, but I decided to start at the very beginning. So I went to episode Fun. like zero, zero. Um, but what I want to talk about is episode 12, like all the way back to the beginning. Not the, not like campaign one or two. I'm talking about like campaign zero, zero, the very beginning, episode 12 is basically a primer on Dungeons and Dragons. So if you've never played it or if you've never DM'd or if you just want a refresher or to learn some stuff, they the whole gang um they bring in three people who've never played before. One of them is doing a basically a Tracy Jordan impression, which is hilarious. And uh they they create their characters. It's just a one-off. It's a one one little shot campaign and and they create the characters with the help of like the usual gang and then Matt Mercer does this whole like I feel like it was at least half an hour, maybe longer. A tutorial about what you need to do to be a good DM and then they come in and they play their one shot but they're all beginners so it's if you've never played before it was really and it was so funny I was laughing my ass off <laughs> but also it was just uh, really really great learning for anyone who's who, who wants to know more about Dungeons and Dragons episode 12 of Critical Role highly recommend it good to know Eric what about you do we introduce me by the way no, I don't think I did. I think I just started talking. <laughs> just started it's talking. Chris Evans. Yeah, it's Chris, Chris Evans. Well, we're going to call him Eric. Uh, call him Eric. I, I right. guess we should say who who our guest is this week. We have a special guest, Eric Steffens back. Hi. Hi. Sorry about... <laughs> well, when you said sad, uh, sad news, we have Eric. I thought you were going to say we have Eric here and, and, be, and be condescending. And, and then you I, actually were genuine. Yeah, I, I was so excited. But, but then you forgot about me for four minutes, <laughs> yeah. so it felt I good I started too. talking about how my wife isn't here, and I got sad, and I right, forgot right. you were in the room. Honestly, I have Chewie's better than me. Let's just I'm I'm happy to be second to her. No one will argue with you. Yeah. I'd, Least of all Chewie. <laughs> yeah. I will I will argue with them. Yeah, no, Chewie's great. Chewie's so sweet. Um hi. Uh yeah, what have I been doing? Uh, I actually saw Aquaman. I have yeah. some conflicting opinions compared sure you to you. Did. But from a, I see what you're saying on a comic book standpoint, especially if you've read them because I haven't. I, I could see uh, appreciating that kind of tr- staying true to the storyline. Um, and just the dialogue, like, yeah. the, all the lines are written like it's in a comic. Oh, book. gotcha! Like if That's, you were to take any line and put it like written in a speech bubble above all their heads, exact same dialogue. That makes that makes a little more sense on how some of the stuff came off. Um, and then uh, I, I more so I finished season two of Making a Murderer, and uh, it's great. Uh, I, I oh man, it's rough. That is a that is a very good. Is it thing. about the same guy again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It, it's further into the the they've kind of like been filming them again for like a year or so, and there's been Got more. It. Stuff that's come up and more evidence or more conflicting storylines and stuff like that that's really challenging. Uh, and then, what was the other? Oh, why I laughed, by the way, at the Dungeons & Dragons wasn't that you liked Dungeons & Dragons at all. Because I used to be addicted to World of Warcraft, like, to a heavy degree. Uh, it was that I did a short film for Warhammer 40K, which is an aggressive version of Dungeons & Dragons. Uh, Have you ever, it's more into the, like, the wargaming aspect of D&D, what it used to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a straight, It's like take out all the lore and just make it violent, oh, okay. and that's what Warhammer is. And I Fantasy sh- chess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, and so I, um, so I shot this really awesome short with these guys that are trying to make uh, Warhammer an actual live-action movie, oh. and they did a fantastic job, and it's really freaking cool. Nice. Where do you see it? Uh, uh, you would go onto YouTube, and you would type in Guardsmen, and it's literally the first thing up. I think it's got like two million views. Oh, it's, nice. it's only been out for, oh gosh, I think it's been out for like a month and a half. Like, okay. It's, oh, fairly new too. Mm. Oh yeah, very new. It, it got to a million, I think, in the first like three weeks. Wow. Like it was, it's it's really good. So it's, it made a dollar on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, it made a dollar. <laughs> they made, they're they're rolling it. And uh, <laughs> and what was great was all the like crazy fans. Like almost every single comment is like, I can't believe this is genuine. This like hits all the points. And like they right. did such a respectful job to detail of that, um, which I couldn't do. I was just I was just the guy in it. That was <laughs> I did well. I really liked my performance, <laughs> but but I don't I don't give myself any credit compared to what they did. Um, yeah, that's that's what I've been doing. Cool. Uh, I think it's time to talk about our wonderful film today. Oh, yes. oh so good. <laughs> so, 
Exclusive. Thank you, for, thank Somebody, you for this opportunity. Uh, I I feel like is, we're gonna be unanimous in our enjoyment <laughs> of it. Guys. I really want to try to defend it today, and I will do what I can. There's things to defend. There are defend. some things to defend. Uh, we're talking about 2018's The Predator, and not uh, to be confused with Predators. Yeah, or, or Predator or Predator. <laughs> Really need to go back to the drawing board on the titles of the Predator movies. <laughs> well, the thing is too that the the, um, the copy or the the cover of the movie looks like the old yeah, it one. Looks like, yeah. So when I clicked on it to try to watch it, I was like, I had to like read. I was like, I was like, I was looking for Arnold Schwarzenegger or I was looking for Olivia Munn, and I was like yeah. <laughs> making sure which one was which. Mm. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. I, we gotta I stop guess... doing that with these titles because technically, when you organize them, it's Predator comma the. So no matter what. <laughs> You're going to be confused. The library, you're going to be lost. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, or you just don't watch it. And that might Articles be just the... don't count. I, I, I... Or put more thought into it. Yeah. yeah. That's the large predator. Just the large predator. Shane the board. Black's the predator. <laughs> the large. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, clearly, we're all really big fans of this movie. Um, <laughs> and the, the thing is, no one was. Like, you just look into the reviews, not good. You look into the box office take, not good. How much did, it, how much did it cost and how much did it make? Uh, I'm looking that up right now because I'm actually getting internet today. I think when you when you think about the idea, everyone love well, a lot of us love Shane Black. So you think, Shane Black, oh, cool. Shane Black make it a Predator movie. But when you stop and think about it, a Shane Black Predator movie is exactly what this movie was. Oh, and yeah. it's not a thing that we should have seen. No. Uh, it, it, was, it was exactly what he does with The Predator. Yeah. So the movie cost uh, 88, and then stateside it made 55. Ooh. Ouch. Or oh, sorry, 51. Did it? Uh, it made more it across say, seas. It, yeah, it made it 160 uh, total worldwide. Ooh, that's still low. That's still low for a movie So did like they this. lose money or did they gain money? Because they would have had to also do like advertising. Marketing and all that. I honestly don't know. Because they don't have the marketing budget on box office. Gotcha. Mojo, but you oh, can, oh, they don't? That's no, just literally the that's just cost. Production budget, I feel yeah. like Shane Black would have made a really good Alien vs. Predator movie because he's so good at bromances. Yeah. yeah Alien Predator bromance. and that's that sequel to Nice Guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, we'll get into all of that. Um, okay. And why I'm surprised that people were surprised by how bad this movie was. See, like, we'll get into all of this after Eric does right. a, I just, a 30 second just Now I'm breakdown. thinking about a Shane Black movie with the Alien vs. Predator. Or ver- Alien and Predator like teaming up to go after a third uh, alien creature that we have not yet met, or like Cthulhu. I'm, I'm or into something. this. It's that I would a crossover with the Riddick movie. Yeah, that'd be perfect. Oh. Have them hunt down Riddick. I'm so into yeah. this. <laughs> I'm into that. How does Riddick oh. handle acidy blood? Oh, I'll take gosh. eight. Vin Diesel, I think, is ready for that too. <laughs> He's ready for fucking anything that isn't Fast and the Furious. All right. Uh, how do you feel about this? What? How do I feel about thirty seconds? Yeah. How do you feel? I mean. You're going to be on camera. Okay, okay. so the premise is to give as much detail as possible or to, if, like, if somebody had to do a book Summarize report Summarize the story in 30 seconds. Summarize the story in 30 seconds. Yeah. So yeah. when we're talking about the movie, everyone will be able to clearly understand what we're talking about because this summary was yeah. so good. Okay. If they've the never seen the movie, oh my God. it's okay because they've heard your Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'll, let's find out. 30 seconds. I, I, didn't, I, didn't prep, I didn't prep this. Perfect. Here we go, 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 okay. go. Oh, we got okay. Go. No, reset it. Reset it. Go. Reset it. Go. Okay, they, okay. This movie starts out. Uh, two aliens chasing each other. One crash lands on Earth. The other one runs. Uh, finds him later. Uh, the one that crash lands coincidentally runs into our hero, uh, which we're gonna find out later. Uh, then uh, that hero steals some of his stuff and then gets put in the loony bin. While in the loony bin, that's also conveniently located where the alien got captured. The uh, alien wakes up, starts killing people, and then a group of uh, militant guys do stuff. And then the movie ends with the aliens dying. Okay. <laughs> I had five more seconds. I just want to bring that up. No, you did not. You spent the first five seconds saying start the timer over. (laughs) You need to count down. You said and go versus like three, go, go. I've never done that for anyone. I'm not. Usually, you know me me the longest. (laughs) That's. I have known you the longest. I did better than the last time I had to do that. I I would say you've wrapped it up every time. You are a stand-up comedian who are. (laughs) They're usually very known for. I have five seconds left. I can wrap this shit. Right, up. right. Cut it down. Yeah, I know. We've yeah. never had a stand-up comedian fail at this. Sooner or later, we will. I can just feel it coming. Can't wait to be that person. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so where I want to start with this one is uh, is just the Predator franchise in dr- general. Okay. Um, has everyone seen the majority, like, at least the first one, if not the the, the Glover one? I'm trying to think which one I haven't seen. I think I've seen. It's just one, I'm two, and then Alien Predator. Still upset yeah. about Bill Paxton. Yeah. 
Like I was thinking about that while I was watching this movie. I was like, man, I miss Bill Paxton. Yeah, he was great. I saw one and Which then one the was Brody Brilliant? one. The second one. And okay. he was brutally killed and I'm still upset about it. With 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 Glover? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah, he's in that he one. He was one of his, like, he's part of his team. Oh, okay. Cop team. Yeah, so it's that one, then the Adrian Brody one, <coughs> and then the two APPR. I didn't Adrian see the Adrian Brody, Brody one, one and that one there looked like o- I'd actually enjoy it. There were some okay parts to it. Overall, I thought it was kind of... Adrian Brody was pretty swole. Yeah, yeah he was. I just liked his Batman Topher voice Grace. the whole movie. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Topher Grace. He was oh, yeah. also there. <laughs> <laughs> those are those are times when there's, there's like, you see some people, like, what, what was... Casting doing, yeah, yeah. like Topher Grace, Adrian like, Brody, and Lawrence Fishburne. Maybe Topher Grace's agent was like, huh. really can be in whatever him. he wants. Sure. I, I will. <laughs> That's very true. But but Topher Grace, it's like it's like wait, huh? it's like it's like in this movie when the guy from Idle Hands is the scientist, <laughs> and I was like, what are you? What are you doing? Did you know the casting director? Like, do you need a job? Okay, can you play a scientist? He's like, give me glasses. We're good to go. <laughs> give me glasses on a white coat. And, uh, yeah, we'll that's all you need. <laughs> and then you die five seconds. Oh, yeah. God. All right. Uh, but my, my major thing was just the Predator franchise. And feel free to disagree with me on this one. They're all terrible. None of them How are. How dare you? I, no. I, I think the first one is fantastic. First the first one, is one it's a blast. I, I also love the really hell enjoy the second oh, one. Oh, the franchise. But, yeah, I just mean the, the franchise, franchise is itself is a terrible franchise. Like, yeah. we, we've yeah. given, we are given one good movie that even at the time when it came out was critically panned. Nobody liked The Predator with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, it great. became a They're fan wrong. favorite. But critically, it did terrible. None of these movies have ever done well critically. None of them have ever been great beyond the first one because of just the sheer bromance factor of it. But. Otherwise, why do we keep expecting good things from Predator movies? Um, I, I think it's one, our fascination with aliens and just like the, I think technology, there's always little things that like impress you about it where you're sure. like, oh, I never thought technology could do that. So there's like the the hunting aspect, the, the uh, invisibility cloak that kind of shows up. Like, I think those aspects always lure you in. And it's it's the same thing with any big blockbuster or like a Transformers movie or that where there's a ton of explosions and and executives and everyone who watches it sees that and goes, oh, this is going to be a great thing to watch. But then you get into it and the writing is the worst shit in the world. Yeah. And and you realize that's what is necessary to actually make a good movie. We also – there's an element of um, fantasy to this because as the dominant species, the idea that there's something out there stronger and better and faster than you is kind of like a, oh, challenge accepted. We want to like – we want to overcome something. There's kind of like this, I don't know, sense of – being hunted and hunting the hunter that is actually kind of like this weird back and forth that's kind of pleasing. I thought you were going to say this sense of being hunted that feels nice. Yeah. <laughs> I'm desired. Right. Somebody um, wants me. Somebody wants my spine. Be, being prey is a kink, guys. Um, uh, <laughs> it, it is. I'm, you just did the Chris Evans laugh, too. <laughs> Oh my god, he did! Oh, it's amazing. So I we think basically he's have. Trying to be Chris if, Evans if, now. Yeah, just, if you imagine Chris Evans as a stand-up comedian, that's who we have yeah. today. It's great. Oh gosh. Um, like if Chris my, Evans could be a don't take foot my job, shorter, Chris. I could be his stunt please double. Please don't take my job. <laughs> um, the, the the predator what? is. <laughs> I am five eight for the record. Okay, I am five eight, <laughs> and he's six foot. I don't know how tall he's. He is. N- yeah. Okay. I'm pretty sure he's six I did foot. take a while. <laughs> um, but the Predator itself is just so cool. It's uh, it's yeah. just a cool design, and I think that's what we're in love with. Where it's less about the stories and more like, but the Predator's awesome. Not as awesome as the Alien. I'm an Alien person in that debate. I agree with but you. Yeah. but at the same time, like yeah, the invisibility cloak, the fact that it can like heal itself, uh, that it knows science on top of like just being you know making a cool sound and having dreads, you know. Yeah, and all that's great. But I mean, how many times do we have to be shown we can't do this twice like how many times probably are we gonna, like five more yeah like, <laughs> how many times are we as fans gonna be like yeah here comes a predator <laughs> oh it sucked of course it sucked i'm trying to think of they always suck i'm trying to think of any anything that made it successful once that they after a while stopped trying. you know what uh, trem- no, they still make tremors. They still yeah. make tremors. There's, yeah. there's one that just came on Netflix actually. Yeah. But that's yeah. meant to be schlocky and cheap. Yeah, now it is. But the first one was meant to be a true like horror, and actually did well. Yeah. I actually thought the first tremors wasn't wasn't terrible. I like the first tremors movie. First um, tremors is great. Yeah, yeah. great dark like, comedy Kevin horror. Bacon, awesome. uh, have you ever seen Puppet Master? Yeah, yeah. Like they stopped doing those. Yeah, but a lot of these like they started out schlocky and then they kind of became funny. Like right, they, they, right, like, kind right. of, like they understood what they were. The Predator franchise hasn't done continues that. to keep trying serious it, it and keeps... has a huge budget. Whereas these yeah. later versions of the movies, they're really low budget and still tying like, up. Like, and none the, of these the movies best... are like explore like looking back at what made the first one a cult hit 
to begin with. There, there, there's not any sort of exploration or retrospection. Mm. Yeah, like the the Chucky movies keep trucking along, and they're all surprisingly okay, like because right. they know exactly what they want to do. Whereas Predator, I feel like each time they're like, no, we need to get that lightning back in this bottle. Like, we can do it. We got it, guys. We're going to bring in Shane Black. That's going to be the answer. But they don't pay. Nope. We I had mean, a good bromance in this movie, thanks to Shane Black. We had those two dudes. Who, yeah, like, but even that wasn't that explored. It yeah. just kind of felt like they had to was, get a bromance in there. It and was like, was let's really make weird. them snip at each other. And I mean, yeah. I don't want to rip on something constantly, but it's like, the, I think the, like, again, I talked about the rain, but the plot holes in this were absurd. Oh, God. Oh, God. And, that, and your so, brain, your, you don't know it. Your brain is like, doesn't piece it together, can, and that's what doesn't. Can make we sense. get into some specifics? Yeah, let's because, do it. Like, okay. okay, so I want to speak. Yeah, pl- okay. Olivia Munn <laughs> is fabulous and gorgeous and amazing, and she was brought in to play a scientist, also the only girl. <sighs> um, oh no, no, uh, Ivan Stravowski. Oh, that's yeah, right. Yeah, she's but she's there. like the mom. Who, she's who not actually part of the does team. a fantastic job for the few lines that she actually. I'm gets mad to at how good she looks in overalls. Um, she was good in everything. She, she was, oh my god, I was really angry. I she, by wrote the way, she was down. she was one of those people that uh, people were like, "How did how did acting work for you?" She's like, "Well, I went to a conservatory for two years in Australia. Then I just sent some clips, and she landed in L.A. and then she got Chuck." Your Australian accent is amazing. It was great. It was really British. <laughs> um, really British. <laughs> I hope that's on your. I was I was halfway through it. and I was like, well, I was halfway through it. And I was like, is she Australian or is she British? Where did, I don't know. I'm just gonna mix it together. <laughs> Okay, so, but anyway, Olivia Munn, like, she's a scientist, right? And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, she's just, like, leaping on top of a bus, grabbing a gun, blowing shit up. She's like a soldier lady. And it I was want like, that what specimen. The fuck? She, she's what? a Shane Black scientist. <laughs> Everyone in a Shane Black movie is their job plus Marine. <laughs> like, <laughs> by, like, <laughs> by the way, to add to the Olivia Munn whole part of that is, I knew when they cast her, I was like, okay, where's the moment that they're going to try to get her naked. Except they didn't even show that much of her. And no, they made they didn't. it story relevant, which I did respect. Please. I mean, <laughs> the story element is that the predator doesn't attack, or the first predator, because we should, we yeah, never yeah. really bring that up. There's two predators. There's one who wants to help humanity when he's not murdering them, and then one who wants to murder everything. The well, one we that, find that out later. In the, yeah, in the, yeah, but the one who wants to help humanity when he's not murdering them, because he murders the fuck out of some yeah. people. He kills Bill Paxton Does, and a pregnant lady. Okay, let me ask you this though. Does he want to ha- the good predator yeah. gp do do, is, <laughs> GP, do like we okay. do is does he actually want to help humanity because he steals the the item which we find out later right but we don't know he could put it on himself and it'd be a whole suit of armor it could just be a lethal weapon <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, but... <laughs> okay, pretty good. Please yeah. tell me that was an intentional joke. The, the, no, I mean, I didn't mean to bring Lethal Weapon into it, but, <laughs> but after I heard it, I was like, oh, that's good, I'm going to keep it. <laughs> but but literally, like, there's no... There, there's no that it's human-based. We don't have any proof of that. He could literally no, have it... The, we, the proof is that the, the, the bad guy says he was here to help us. Like, well, he was coming to give us something. Also, the proof is that every character in this movie has read the script. Yeah, that also I don't also know if you helps. noticed yeah, that. They all know everyone everything. knows everything. <laughs> like, Olivia Munn, even the Get Naked scene we were talking about later on, she's just like, he won't attack you if you're not carrying weapons. And it's like, you know this how? Because you were naked and it walked by you, and that's the fucking conclusion right. that you made? Like, how is that? There is a very real chance that the Predator watched by. I was like, so your plan of attack was get naked. I'm leaving. Like, right. <laughs> <laughs> No, and, Humans and, and, are I th- weird. <laughs> I think that's one of the things with the predators in general is that there's these times when, like, you look at them and they come off as these like uh, simple-minded, like, just beasts that like to kill. Yeah. But then they have these crazy moments of like huge intelligence, and it's such a conflicting moment of where there's not that consistency. Like, I mean, I'm going back to the first predator, but like when the predator catches the trap that Arnold Schwarzenegger is trying yeah. to get to him, Arnold's presumption is that he's stupid. Like, the, the predator doesn't have heightened intelligence when they all do i mean they operate yeah. giant spacecrafts and yeah. machinery like so it doesn't quite they figured out interstellar travel they're but, smarter than us right but <laughs> but he's gonna fall for the trap with the wood stakes like <laughs> <laughs> do it come on that's you know that's the other thing is like the characters all know what's happening and they all understand the rules as if they've read previous screenplays but there's no mention of the fact that these creatures have been here before at least in the second no. predator they were like oh yeah in the jungle no, they, this happened they mentioned it they did yeah they even it, mentioned it you talking about in the predator no no in this movie yeah yeah, 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 yeah that's yeah, why the, i'm saying the predator to oh. 
Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They, I don't remember that. Yeah, there's a guy um, who's like, oh, they've been here before. Once uh, in 87, once in 97. Oh, the, lead, the lead villain. I must have yeah. like, checked out the at that moment. And I think that's, the lead villain in the beginning. That, that makes sense. Oh, I see. Okay. And I, think I get that, checking out during all that. that. I was probably jumbo. writing down yeah. some cool notes. And my guys, I got some amazing ones. To your point, though, I think that is one thing that also really bothered me is the fact that, again, everyone knows everything, but they also know what happened before. Like, they, nothing in the movie was surprising to any of them. Mm-hmm. In which case, like, it was like, well, what else is there? Are they just going to shrug at? I Like, even the, even the bad guy takes the technology, starts wearing the technology, like, okay, here we go. And, and no, like, yeah, they all fit. Yeah. They all fit really well. They all fit really yeah. well, yeah, yeah, and they yeah. all work really well, and they know how to use them except for Again, that one time. How do you, hey, this kid. is stuff they they answered in the movie. Again, the kid puts it on, and it snaps to fit his arm. Like, it changes to size. No, no I, 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 I'm more like, the, it's the convenience of the answer. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's, yeah. It, yeah. It's like, <laughs> yeah. It's like, hey, kid, how do you get this helmet to work? You don't. It just... Fights back when somebody hits you. Cool. And, uh, and that kind of that line kind of undercuts how badass the predators are because oh, all their gear does their fighting for right. them. That's a good point. Oops. Right. <laughs> it's kind of burying the lead a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I think one of the other. You sure you want to write that, Shane Black? The the plot holes too is like he go he gets the um the lead. Gosh, I, I looked at his name a second ago. Not um, Ben Foster. Not this, Ben. Not Ben Foster. Isn't Boyd. Uh, yeah, Boyd Hodbrook or Holbrook. Something? Yeah. Um, uh, he was on Narcos and all that. Um, he was in Logan. He was great in Logan. Oh, in, yeah, he was in Logan. Yeah. He's very um, handsome. I did write the hi, I'm handsome note on here because he did the, <laughs> he did the hi, I'm handsome face pretty early on in the movie. Uh, he uh, so so he gets interviewed, uh, investigated in the. I feel like it was, I guess to go with it, there are all these moments of like, these are cliche moments of movies that, moments that we really like, but they were done so obviously that we knew what was coming. Does that make sense? Like, and and they were also what, kind what of winking specifically, like uh, so, like so the investigation, like, and in the beginning he's playing all coy, and then all of a sudden he's gonna, it, you know, he's gonna come and be like, I know what you really want. You want to know oh, if the yeah. aliens are real. Yeah. And then you have this scene later yeah. with um with the two guys, the two the bromance guys that are together, um, and the, it's like it's obvious what's about to happen. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, that's the whole movie. I mean, and, and that's what's frustrating is like you, I, I, I was trying to think about this beforehand. What you could have done writing wise that would have made it work better. Earnest, you, earnest. No, it's either earnest or you steer into the curve. Like, like my my best example. Like, it's not a great movie by any stretch, but The Expendables. That is a movie that entirely just plays in your expectations and has fun with them. You know every beat that's going to happen throughout the whole movie, and it's just a party. Like we're just like we're here to have fun with these big hulking idiots who just never stop taking steroids for some reason, and we're going to have a blast. That's what this movie should have been. If they just like we're going to make a predator movie and we're just going to be stupid and fun the whole way through, you know what's going to happen, but that's okay. Or, but they're trying to keep it serious. Yeah, and well, that's no, the but, wrong choice. Yeah, especially for predator. with Shane, Bla- Shane Black in charge. Yeah. Like just it's, let Shane Black do what Shane Black does. Like you could have had like the predators injured and hold up somewhere. And now they need to find it oh they team up that's what Shane Black does like that's yeah. the kind of story he would do yeah and then like it's a race can the predator heal himself and start killing people before they can find it something like that like that's just obviously bad elevator pitch guys yeah. but um, <laughs> that's the bad version um but but still like if, if Shane Black's in charge of the story they had a bromance and then the rest of the story wasn't it's or not invert really, it. it's not yeah invert let him, the, yeah. the the trope of the, first, of the first one just make it be about the the predator yeah being the hunted for once yeah some yeah. let it let him do i don't know it feels like shane they let him off the leash a little bit but not enough to make a true shane black movie see i don't think they let him off the leash at all like beyond just like his random inserted sense of humor which yeah. I, was funny i mean they got the right people for it but like my my number one shane black moment is did you just say eat your pussy is that what you just said <laughs> <No>. what <laughs> No, not oh, that one oh. at all. That was a very oh, Shane a Black quote. written okay. line. That's a quote. But, that's a quote. Uh, <laughs> but uh, the for me, it's the severed arm. Like, though, you guys okay back there? And the predator holds out the arm that he. Oh made my god! Up. I'm like, oh, that is just pure slapstick sense of humor. Like, that's what I want to see. And then he rests. He yeah. sits and just <laughs> <laughs> made it through. Like those are the sorts of moments that I wanted to see more of. Because like, I, uh, I, uh, one of the people was going to be on today before. This was just the week of scheduling errors, except for luckily Eric. Um, Thanks. For sure. I didn't say unfortunately. Unfortunately, Eric. <laughs> no, no, it just well, implied I had nothing to do guy. Saturday morning, which I don't. <laughs> um, not a lot of stand-up shows at nine in the morning on Saturdays. <laughs> nope, nope. Uh, but our friend Chris was going to be on, and he helped work with the uh, the marketing team. Like he worked on the trailer and stuff. And even he said, like when we watched like the uncut version, it was funny. Like they legitimately had jokes that worked and landed and it just felt like either chris and i massively disagree in movies which we usually don't 
or they've cut a ton of that out for time. And it's like, you could have had, it felt like hour, hour 48. What, yeah. I want to say like hour, half. Hour what it 45. ends up doing is losing some of that. Like it just becomes ironic or detached I- irony instead yeah. of like charm, genuine charm or earnestness. Like, yeah, there's not enough playing into the joke. So suddenly you're like, well, are you just trying to be cool? This, that's the whole movie. Like, are you just trying to be cool and trying to be hip? Hello, fellow kids. You know I yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> I would have really liked to see a movie of just Keegan, Michael Key chasing down a tra- predator. Keegan, Michael Key just with like, Tom Jane as the romance. I'm yes! into that. Like that, that final shot of theirs is amazing and unequaled. Like yeah. as they, when they kill each other, that is an unequal moment in this movie. That was the one good. Yeah. yeah. I thought it was a little heavy handed, but it worked. It worked. That's what the movie should have been. They, they actually didn't waste Keegan Key because he, no. he, he got a lot of great lines. He got to do what he does. And that was really But that funny. moment where they, they off each other, it's it's kind of our modern equivalent of the, the handshake in the beginning of Predator where they yeah. they grab each other's hands mm. and their muscles bulge Arr. and it's all glistening and just This was just, comedic muscles. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, that's that same moment, that same feel, and then the rest of the movie just edits the rest of that out. Yeah. Like to bring up a, a compliment or a point of where like I feel like the writing the brief moment is the moment when they realize they got to get off the bus and he, uh, uh, he keeps trying to get Thomas Jane activated and stuff like that and starts making <laughs> jokes. And then Thomas Jane goes to strangle him. And then we realize that it's a, it's, or we, I mean, we knew it was a setup, but them working all together really well and offhand it and showing these guys full capabilities. Like that's a brief moment in it where it's like you, I know you can write something that's uh-huh. creative and clever. Yeah put it throughout the whole freaking script yeah, or don't just leave it be like edit it to, down to the point where it's oh you saw the fugitive too yeah <laughs> right like you saw also, that scene about the but i would point out that like one of the dudes is on the loony butt bin because he's like really christian <laughs> yeah no no he takes he takes uh meds okay he takes i think i think he's got a drug problem because oh, it's, right. it's called nettles yeah because oh, he has all the, he has all the okay, pills okay because yeah. i was sitting there going like was i mean is Christianity like a <laughs> mental disorder? You're clearly insane. <laughs> no, they, they really bury that with the editing. And if you don't exactly know the term, like, I don't know. It, it's I still don't understand how Thomas Jane and uh, uh, Key have what they did in the military. Thing. They really, they just kind of breeze over it. I, 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 re, I literally, because I knew I was watching this, I was like, I need to understand this. And I went back and tried to hear it again. And I couldn't hear exactly the description that um, that uh, the, guy, yes. the guy from Game of Thrones gives the description. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Alfie, right. I'm uh, Reek. That's the, that's the other thing, but that's another thing. Like that, he was on the loony bin again because he had Tourette's. Like, is that why he was in the loony bus? No, no, no. They, no. They, there was there was a there was a fight. Uh, there was an accident, his, like a uh, helicopter. Yeah, I was not paying attention like to the that. right. Yeah, uh, uh, everyone in his the, everyone is like unit died, died yeah. except for like him. But then the other guy saved him or something oh, like okay. that. Like they, 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 they had PTSD. I guess. I think that's what's. I okay. think the bus is supposed to be PTSD. Okay, okay. I think that's because I, I worked with a guy who had Tourette's and he could do his job. It's they're not like you're insane. The, yeah, mm-hmm. they're coming from the Veteran Affairs. Yeah, like building. Why they put the lead guy on that bus? I still don't understand. It doesn't make any sense no. because he's being investigated by the secret agency to know what he knows. But then they put him on the bus to take him somewhere but it's not to the facility, but then they turn him around and bring him to the facility because Olivia Munn, who's just gotten clearance, has authority to investigate him. Oh, this seems really shittily written when you were talking about Olivia. Jesus Christ, <laughs> I mean, that's, that's Oof. <laughs> that would explain why there are large chunks of time where you just kind of zone out and you're like, yeah, I hope well, something I dies soon. I hope something dies soon. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Like Because I just ignore, I, I, I shut off during all that explainy part. Because none of the explainy part added up. Yeah. And I just didn't have enough. Like, this movie doesn't give me enough time to really care about that shit anyways. And that's the thing is like I, when it comes to like these kind of like this one isn't one of them. But like the dry sci-fi where they just, it's just a lot of talking and explaining the science mumbo jumbo. I usually love that. Like I get mm-hmm. really into it. Like I, I'm still reading. Uh, I mentioned it a few episodes back of uh, the Alien 3 comic book. I'm still reading that. And the, it's paced like an alien movie. So the first third is just science mumbo jumbo that somebody made up. And they did it. You can fix that if you have really solid relationships. There's yeah, only one right. solid relationship in this entire movie, and we've already discussed it. It was between those two guys on the loony bus. And and other than that, like the father-son relationship, we didn't even... Uh, apparently, I zoned out a lot, so forgive me if I'm wrong about this, but we didn't even know that was his kid until... Pretty far into the movie. Oh I mean, no, we knew made... right away. Yeah, you knew right away. You did because he said sh- he shipped the box home, and the box went 
to Oh, I see. I missed that uh, too. Partly because I was really distracted <laughs> by the fact that they said that it, it, he went to his P.O. box and then it was forwarded here. I have a P.O. box. They don't like, if well, your shit goes to your P.O. box, they don't go, oh, the, wait, the ma- let me deliver a, was, it by hand to there your was house. A converse, <laughs> there was a conversation between the mailman and the kid and the mailman was trying to guilt the kid by saying his father couldn't afford the P.O. box. It was like the one time where I was like paying attention. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, yeah, like yeah. all of that. And, and then they just, they just, br- they just breeze way. past it. And I'm like, yeah. something... Fishy here. Either way, there was never. I never felt like this dad really loved his kid. He kept saying it, but I didn't ever. The bond feel wasn't there, it. but I did like them at least interjecting things where he's like, "Hey, we're not going to start a gunfight with my kid around." Yeah. Uh, when when the bad guys come to the farm, he actually. Like, what but, if he had started the movie by show? Well, I guess you can't because he was shooting things. But like, if earlier <laughs> in the movie he had been showing his a picture of his kid to people, or you but, know, it was but like, I think the. This is actually one of the few things that I, I think the movie did well. Well, they say I, estranged. I, they say yeah, estranged. They say estranged. So estranged like, wife and kid. Because in if the, the wife... The yeah, but the I don't age. feel like that he but loves you, his kid. I never felt like he but really I think loved that was, his kid. Personally, I think that was the point. Because I, yeah. I, I think it was All that right. he was estranged and he was fine being without his wife and kid. But then when he has to defend them, he has to defend them. So he doesn't have that relationship. Well, then build it so that that's the mission. I agree. It, it, yeah, just, the, it never... It, there was nothing it, there. It, it could have been fixed, but I think if all they wanted to show was that he was an estranged father who's willing to take care of his son but doesn't really have a relationship with him, they did that. If that was the goal, that's what they did. If also, they wanted to show a loving dad, well, they missed the boat. And then they try to kind of throw some subterfuge in there being like, is it the adult McKenna that the Predator wants? It's like, bitch, no. 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 I, I did like that, actually. I, I mean, I, I guessed it when he said McKenna, but the, that was a good – I think I felt that was a good mislead because you think all the times it's this big strong one and this kid has always thought that he's not valuable and he thinks he's the loser of, of the world when it comes to turn out that this kid's intelligence is the thing that could save the world. So I liked, I liked that misdirect. Um, I didn't like that the kid was able to figure out alien technology – language in like 30 seconds well that's uh, and that's where he's you, a rain man yeah that's where you get to the the what is i looked up quite a few articles on it the biggest sticking point in this movie for everyone and that is the miracle of magical autism and it's like they right. do this all the time in movies and it's like yep. has anyone met an autistic person who's written a movie because <laughs> you've missed the mark right <laughs> like there, like there there's levels of like high intelligence but like yeah he like he he gets the clip out of it, which is, by the way, it's amazing that that thing controls a spaceship. Um, which, by sorry, okay, plot That's hole, some amazing plot technology, hole, plot <laughs> hole. So, so they've got the. I mean, I get like, hey, on your arm, you've got a, you've got a piece of technology that you can steer a ship with. Sure. Okay, except the ship, this the ship that he is steering is the ship that's coming from outer space, not the one that crashed. So he is the gauntlet of the one that crashed, oh, yeah. but he steers the one of the one that's coming down that's the guy with the dogs and gets it to land. Universal remote. <laughs> so, so, Wait, so, that's so, a somehow, poorly designed so, technology. So, 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 well, again, and, and you can look through, apparently all helmets are interconnected because yeah. he finds a piece, he finds well, a helmet. Well, it's, it's Apple technology. He finds, he <laughs> finds it. He find, that cloud. There's, a, how helmet, the there's a helmet that's in their storage for who knows how long, and the alien just puts it on and maybe types something in and then targets his helmet and then can look through it to see where it's at and and take pictures to understand the location. No GPS. GPS. No, no, no GPS. GPS. He ta- he looks like, oh, there's pictures of what a kid draw. I'm going to go here. Like that <laughs> oh kid did a legitimate description. Like that's th- why you put tape on the webcam. But, <laughs> but, the, but you watch, you watch the, the, the 11 foot predator, which we can talk at some point about at some point we is, get there, is, yeah. is, is, is flying this ship. And all of a sudden it gets hijacked by this little kid who's figured out alien technology and then doesn't know if he's steering a ship or not, just as hitting buttons. And the alien's like, Oh no, I can't outsmart this. Like you don't have an override switch on the plane. You yeah. got to disconnect that Bluetooth, brother. Yeah, yeah. None of that is uh, is good. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was just like watching. I was like, how do you, how, where did they, th- like, there's like, we have to figure out a way to get that plane to land. And it's like, how about the kid? T- oh, God. It's like, frustrating. It, 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 it also never even acknowledges that this is a dumb thing that's happening on screen. Like, it, it's one of those things where this is where they're taking the movie seriously. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, no, no, no. This has to be the same, with the same kind of like wink, wink that the two guys shooting each other from being stabbed at the end is. Like, yeah, you, it has to be yeah, that same way. Has to be a if moment. that was the whole movie, it'd be such a better yeah. movie. All you need is one guy going, how the fuck does this work? And 
all of Eric's complaints go right out the window because it's like, oh, nobody understands why this works. This is right. stupid. Mm-hmm. If we all agree that this is a stupid plan, I'm on board with and the movie. And confound Olivia Munn who's trying to science it out and yeah. can't figure or even it out. T- you even, know, even, let her, because she's funny too. Yeah, she and could she be hysterical. she didn't get to do any nope. comedy in you this movie. You could even turn it in uh, the fear of video games against you know itself where it's like, the kids learning knows it's because of video game. Like you could even have yeah, we fun did that with that. Black too. We've right. done that already. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, it's you know it's back again. That fear <laughs> of video games. It's like you can play with these things. You can have fun with it. But this is the serious moment. This was the high drama. High drama. Yeah. By the way, I do, the kids wearing the helmet for Halloween. By the, the helmet. It was actually a cool costume. Like like yeah, him walking yeah. around. It's like oh it pulled off. But then the the guy throws like an egg at him, and then the machine blows the guy up. <laughs> <laughs> Just murders him, and the kids like. He, he jukes at it, not being yeah. like, I'm sorry, I don't care who you are. You're you're a kid. You are scared. Just out of, You're pooping your pants right there. Unless he's just really good at disassociating things. Like, I didn't kill him. The helmet killed him. Right. I'm right. good to it's go. Not me. <laughs> it's like, I, I mean, I could see that actually. He's very practical because he is very yeah. practical on a lot of stuff. What does he say to the mailman? It's none of your business. My, or my like dad that? kills people. Oh, <laughs> my yeah, dad yeah. kills people. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. Some, some trash talk or something like that. But uh, did the the autism thing bother anybody else? I know Sam, who's going to be on today. Seem realistic. Yeah, Sam was going to be on today. She really hated it, and I, I don't disagree with her. I I do agree. There was an article that Chewie sent me where somebody talked about the idea that although autism could not have been represented more incorrectly in this movie than it was, it's still nice to see a hero with autism for people who have autism who'd like to see the movie, they're never represented and in a way as like a hero. And I was so, saying that like that's Newt's uh, commander from the fantastic yeah. beast is a good example of it done. It's I a, think it's done right because I think it's done he, better than this for sure. Yeah, I, I mean, because he's, I mean, I'm not autistic and I don't have any autistic children, so I'm just going to, you know, assume, yeah. but I've, I've heard people say that he it's done right. Cause he's just kind of socially awkward. Um, but you know, and he gets to be the hero, whereas this, it, again, like you said, it was a magical power. Yeah, but, and also, and they just keep hammering it in there. It's the yeah. next step this of evolution. A, next step of evolution. Next step of evolution. We get it. But this is also a movie that uses the R word. This, this movie oh, also uses the R word. Oh yeah. Too with uh, you know just uh, carelessly. Yeah, yeah. So a movie that is careless with what other people say and then uses this magical autism trope. It's like you're playing in a you're playing in something you're not good enough to it's, do. It, it kind of feels like thinking about it. It's like. Somebody, the, whoever the writer was, or whoever got hired to Shane do Black. it, Sh- oh Shane Black wrote he it wrote, too. Yeah. So it was like he had ideas of really cool scenes in his head. He's like, oh, that'd be great if the predator did this, or I had this moment. And then he said, okay, I have to get them to these spots. Yeah. Okay, I can't figure out how, so I'm just gonna do it anyways. And and the audience and will accept it. And even everyone here is much more in depth into movies and and picks up on that stuff. But a random person. Is still a is a moderately intelligent person, and the brain can't process it. Yeah, it's like you, 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 a little kid. You can't. You have to defend to them, like like Easter Bunny. Like, how is that a real thing? And we get eggs. Like, I don't. Why do Easter Bunny? Like, what you saying? The Easter Bunny is not real. The, yeah. Well, maybe it is, but it's the egg part. The egg part. The, it's the, because it was uh, a fertility holiday. It's a fertility. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Yeah, that's it's, it. It's a yeah. pagan fertility holiday. Oh well, no, but why I'm bringing it up yeah, is no. trying to trying to defend trying to explain to a kid yeah. why do we give off eggs for an Easter bunny? It's like I know because the kid even with moderate intelligence knows that an egg isn't laid by a bunny, yeah. and so any random person watching a movie will be like, I don't know, I, they can't def, they can't articulate like I, people at this table could articulate why this doesn't make yeah. sense, but they know it doesn't make sense and doesn't leave the movie feeling and, well. Which is, which is why I didn't make a shitload of money. Right. Which is why it's it didn't a, work. Yeah. There was one moment I liked where the kid was walking around that classroom after the fire alarm went off and he was putting all the chess pieces back and I was just like, relatable, that's my job because I'm a script supervisor. <laughs> I'd just be like, oh my God, that kid's doing my job. I feel you, kid. I feel you in that moment. You're doing it. And and that was the thing is his autism was put in intentionally because they needed somebody to be able to read alien technology. Yeah. yeah. And and that was the premise of it. Now Not, it was also his only his it was, whole personality. He yeah. didn't really have much of a. No, he, he was a, the autistic. Kid. Yeah, but right. like that, yeah, it wasn't put in there in earnest to make an autistic hero or to make a character for people who have autism. That's not why he was there. He was right. there as a MacGuffin to read alien technology. Yeah, and that's where they missed the mark. Because if he had been the other way, kind of like how, like say, Newt Scamander in uh, Harry Fantastic. Potter, Fantastic. this works. Yeah. Right, that's great. Yeah, this was just, it's just wholly mismanaged yeah. every step of the way. You mentioned something earlier about the evolution thing. Oh, because Olivia Munn brings it up all the but time. But it's such a, du- 
You had a premise already. If if you're worried about climate, and in fact, it's a great premise. Climate change is destroying our planet. Humanity is going to die. It's I a did going like out. Of, it's a going out of business sale. These people chase down prey, and that's their thing. So they would be coming to Earth to like chase down humans before they go extinct. You could have had a shitload of predators come here looking to yeah. do it, and instead to make it about the evolutionary change, you didn't need to do that. That was overly complicating what was already built into what a predator is. Yeah. Ugh. No, <laughs> and, I, and the I, first so movie just sets, the, the first movie sets up the premise. It's like one thing, one thing is what it is. It's simple. Just expand on it. Like, and this feels like it has to be so many different things. Well, that's, I feel like every time they've ever tried to explore who the predators are, it's like, Oh, you don't have a good answer. Like they, they did in the comics a I, little bit back in like the nineties. They had some really fun stuff. But I, I think it's a, I brought it up earlier, but because they, they don't want to make them intelligent beings, but they have to be intelligent beings yeah. to have the technology that you're giving them. Mm -hmm. They can't just be some, some dumb brute that just has all these different, they toys. have to be defeatable in these movies. By notes, by studio notes, because it's like you have to, the humans have to win eventually. But then it's like, well, that's kind of counter to these predators are well, that's, amazing. That's they, right. they would wipe the floor with us. I actually right. kind of like the second movie because the second movie does it. At the end of the movie, when he goes, oh, you're, a, you're a, a good opponent. Here's a gun and lets him go. That tells you like something about why they're here and why they do what they do. Yeah. Um, uh, I was going to say the one that we talked about, the other ones, Alien versus Predator, the first one where they're in like the Arctic and they, oh, they drill yeah. the hole. I, I liked it because I got the – it wasn't about humans. It was it was uh, oh alien, uh, predators come down and they hunt the aliens and it's a rite of passage to be a higher place in their society. Undercutting all what? of the alien franchise in the most insulting way possible. But Fanta fantastic. But yeah. for this, <laughs> that, for this, I get this because you have these kind of aliens that are just kind of these beasts or all sure, that, yeah. and then you have these predators that are their whole point is to hunt challenging game. And, and so y a true test is being able to survive that. And so even when he in that movie uh, rallies up with the girl as the, as the lead character and gives her the mark on the cheek and then they hunt together and they work together to do this, you see like they're not – always just trying they're not gonna like i could I, they couldn't just they're not gonna kill every second they're near something that's not them yeah and th that was i'll give you the one good thing in that movie and i think this movie kind of did that too like they tried to with the whole like the let's let's get into it before we we okay. wrap this thing up but the with the two different predators like that was like that was kind of the the little guys um what do we call him G gp uh, gp gp yeah. uh that was kind of his thing like he's like i'm only gonna kill people who are attacking me and like when you kind of know that it's like oh that's kind of true he didn't really go after anyone who didn't who wasn't armed or right. uh, wasn't going after him which was one person um but everybody else he just kind of murdered and not just like oh i need to put them down it's like oh i'm gonna cut them in half and hang him from a tree it's like uh, okay i guess i kind of get the whole you're not killing people who are nice but people that aren't good boy oh man um but then we bring in the eleven foot predator, and then all the whole like his oh. only he just kills everything, right? But the somehow whole, like, didn't feel scary, not scary at all. Yeah, he kind of looked a little dumb. Yeah. There's a hard line too when there's a level of indestructibility to someone when it's like, um, like like, like the amount of bullets that went at that eleven foot predator, like in in the quarry, and then uh, with the bombs and stuff like that. Like I bring up this joke because I watched uh, Rain of Fire. The, the Matthew McConaughey movie? Matthew McConaughey yeah. movie. Great movie. With, great, yeah. movie. <laughs> great movie. Great movie. Talk about movie. a movie that knows what it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so so I watched it with my dad and we're leaving. And I was like, Dad, what would that be like? You know, if like, you know, all of a sudden dragons come over the world. And he's like, it, it, they wouldn't they wouldn't win. Like, it's like, it wouldn't even be close. And I was like, wait, no. But like, their armor, he's like, give me one fifty caliber gun <laughs> and you can send all the dragons in the world after me and I will mow through all of them. <laughs> it's like, that shell goes through like six inches of steel. I don't give a shit how hard your <laughs> your dragon scales are. You're dead. And it's like, I don't care how good your technology is. That's a missile that just hit you. Yeah. Like, you're on fire. Like, you've had, like, when they're in the quarry, those are all highly intelligent, trained military on both sides that are all loading into him against an electric fence and the only thing that happens is his invisibility shield goes down like none of those bullets puncture well then then he's, he's, a, then he's, he's an back alien to the, though then you go back to the first one it's like right? that's the whole point of it like bullets could kill him so he's invisible you can't see him you don't know where he'll strike he's just better than you he's just better than you and that undercuts us completely if the only thing keeping him is magical armor or like <laughs> bullet sponginess yeah in video games it's like Okay, yeah, I guess. Like, you're not scary. 
<laughs> you're just you're just here until you can't be here anymore because st- the movie tells you. I just want to go back and say, Eric, uh, as a dragonborn warden, <laughs> I am very offended by your example, and I feel like maybe you're selling dragon short a little bit. That's you think you, <laughs> you think you think uh, dragon versus fifty just caliber? Saying, gun. I have lightning breath. Is no. all I'm saying. From okay. how far away? I can shoot you from a mile away. <laughs> like twenty <laughs> squares. <laughs> I have extended dragon breath, so yeah, like 20 squares. I have extended dragon breath. <laughs> I do. Let's That's see how the roll beats. goes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, the, the, you just, I don't remember who just said it. Uh, one of you did. The whole, he's not scary, I think is the most important thing. We all said it. We all okay. kind of said yeah. it in our own way. I think it's the most important thing about the 11 foot predator because that's supposed to be like their ace in the hole, like, wasn't shown until the final trailer that there's two predators and one of them's a really big one. Right. Like, it was like, a, that was supposed to be like the, oh shit moment. And it was just like, oh, this is shit moment. And like that, and it's even done stupid. Like, even the reveal is bad. Yeah. I was like, wait, around, there's just a second a big one? ass predator just lumbering around outside. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I have to I have to briefly touch on the wonderful plot hole of uh, I I'm down with the alien dogs the predator sure. dogs I actually kind of liked them I'm fine with that I'm not fine with I shoot you in the head and then you become loyal to us he lobotomized he lobotomized him. him yeah what that, yeah. They, they threw out oh you lobotomized him what? by shooting him in the back of the head yeah it, it gave him brain damage yeah so he has brain damage and now he uh, and now, now he's, he's just a dog, yeah. he's just just a dog that just likes to follow them around and randomly keeps dropping toys I mean that's well, the same one throws him yeah. and then what because that's how she gets him to go away she throws him and then whenever he comes back he's fetched the toy oh <laughs> I like this like more that. I'm yeah. down with this dog more. okay um, it would now be a good time to bring up that I have a podcast coming up about dogs oh, and yeah. movies <laughs> and this movie will be on the list that I will talk about because of the alien dog? Because the alien dog, but there's yeah. also a real dog. There is a real there's dog, a yeah. dog, which, Beautiful which dog. by the way, Beautiful we dog. don't see any kind of... One of my biggest complaints, it bothered me for like the whole rest of the movie, is the last shot of this dog was the dog racing toward the motorhome. And they don't let him and in. And they don't let him in, and we never see what happened next. Yeah. <laughs> did, you ever, did you ever see I Am 4? No. Oof. The but the but the dog in it. Is there a, there's a dog in I am four. There's a dog in I am four. There's a dog in I am four. It's a it's a it's a mythical being that's meant to protect the sacred ones. It's the it's the gecko that oh, okay, turns okay, the dog. Okay. Sure, sure, sure. And and you think it's just a dog, and then you find out it's like it can transform itself into whatever it wants to. It's like this big monstrous beast. Um, I just love the loyalty. I- aspect of, i saw that on a plane and i was kind of in and out asleep. yeah i just i i think the one thing i do like is in this i guess i guess that's always an element of being somebody that's a dog owner you see that loyalty of the animal even the the um oh gosh what, what was it a uh it wasn't a pit bull but it was like um the one in this movie the one you're trying boxes no it wasn't a box i think it was a pit it was like a pit, pit mix of something. Yeah. It was a bully breed. For but like it it's, breed. Yeah. it's it him coming out and then being playful and then becoming protective of this kid. Like that's just a general warming element to see these parts where like the idea that an animal is stupid and dumb and doesn't understand context of situations yeah. versus it knew in that moment like, hey, like I'm going to defend this thing. I don't care if I'm going to die. I'm going to protect this. Like I love that kind of stuff in movies in general. You should come be the guest on my podcast when I talk about <laughs> – uh, dogs in the predator. Movie. <laughs> Bring me on. We'll continue this conversation. It's going to be called a dogs podcast. Stay tuned for it. Is it going to be... have a? We'll have a release date for you at some point. At some point, at some I'm pretty point. much ready to go as soon as I can get somebody to come on. So soon. Yeah. <laughs> um, is there anything we've missed in this movie that we have not jabbered on about that we need to? That the uh, the gift magically has a self destruct defense mechanism to escape the pod before it explodes. That is pretty cool. <laughs> I love how that at the end is that he blows up the ship and then at the end we see he's like, oh yeah, the, the gift, it survived. Apparently it has a, it knew that the thing was going to blow itself up and it, it got away. Yeah, that, that was a, it's a pretty good line of code. They decided right into that thing. <laughs> uh, I also and really, the, yeah. I think my favorite one is Nettles dying. Like that is just the best of like. <laughs> Which one was that? Uh, that was the guy who got cut in half by the, yeah, the shield. Like, just <laughs> jump, yeah. dude. That's All what right, the other so guy did. That guy ducked, that guy jumped. I'm gonna shoot it. <laughs> <laughs> I hate, I hate when people die for stupid reasons. Yeah, it's one of my biggest pet peeves in movies in general. It's like, give him some level. Like, 
if he's made it this far, he has a certain level of intelligence. Like, make him jump and trip and then fall, like, be or, clumsy. Or be the first one to die. Like, he didn't see it coming. That's and a then, great point. And then, right. and then he goes. But because, <laughs> because everybody else dies, like, the guy that's up top being the sniper, and then the predator sneaks up on him yep. and shoots his arm, he still fires the flare off and does, like, a defensive maneuver yep. and was caught on it. Like, the other guy, it's like, he, you know, he was already a little crazy, he jumps into the engine. Like, the two, they go to hold the predator off and try and cause the trap. Like, every person died for relevance even i hate the villain but the fact that he dies because the gun shoots at him in the head yeah like is stupid to me like some level of like for as, as, all as of aware are... for as aware as everyone is of the script and the creatures and yeah. having been there before they're forcibly idiots but the worst is going to be nettles like i don't care about every yeah. right the guy who just saw two different people avoid the force field with no problem Stood there and fired his gun he, at it. He had two, he saw two he had two <laughs> options that proved successful, <laughs> and he said no. I'm gonna shoot it <laughs> like right. the force field, the interstellar force field. It keeps them alive in space. Your fucking gun isn't gonna. Oh, you got cut in half. Right. No. Yeah. You like, deserve that. I just feel like there's like it's in horror movies. It's like any action movie, anything in general. When a person dies unintelligently, when they have that level of competence, it's just the like. Oh god! It's, it, At it's least Resident Evil had the decency to be to turn it into a gotcha moment, where they're like, "I'm gonna jump," and it's like, "No, we're gonna turn it into a grid." Fuck you! Like uh, it had the decency yeah. to do that to sw- uh, like to be like you thought you knew I what you're up like, against. Nightmares right, about right. That that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. I'm fine with all scene. that. But like, but that like the same thing like in war movies and stuff like that. Like when people die, it's just like why? How they didn't? They couldn't have gotten there if they had that level of stupidity. Like arrogance is one thing to cause you to die. Yeah, but complete ignorance is not. Yeah. Uh, oh. That one, oh, the, the, when he died, I mean, it took me a while to finally go, nope, don't like this movie. But it took to that point. Like, up until right. then, I'm like, really? Because I'm just trying to be like, yeah. it's Shane Black, it's, it's Shane Predator. Black. I'm trying to judge it on the Predator scale of like, how does it rank as a Predator movie? And even that I was like, well, I guess it's better than the AVP movies. Yeah. Um. Some One good thing is Tom from Bird Box is in this movie. And yes. He's yeah. very handsome. He does, yep. well, he does well, though they have that, again, they have that, they escaped the facility, and then they have this random down moment where they're just kicking back, drinking <laughs> drinking beers and lawn chairs yeah. at a rundown motel with bikers. I'm pretty sure that's what military guys would do. I just, like, the, the Shane Black of it all by is the way, just so frustrating. Uh, so, well, one, I love, by the way, that they make the bets on what she's going to do with the shotgun that and was the good. shot, uh, yeah. and it was all put. That was a nice. Yeah. That was a nice written moment. That was great. Where like it was contrived. And he was like, "I got it. Oh, I should have guessed on the bet. Like it didn't <laughs> happen." But what I don't like is they go from that moment at this biker hotel, and then he figures out that where they're going to get the um, gear. At, uh, yeah, and they show up to the house with tons of high end guns. They oh, yeah. all they all are jam packed with ammunition, and they are they are, they have no weapons before that. They went to the gun store. They went. To, I mean, <laughs> I mean, they, they clearly did something in that brief moment okay. where they have high end assault rifles and like rocket launchers and like all this different stuff. And it's just like how? Well, it's like Counter Strike. You just press like S and then <laughs> yeah, do your loadout before you start the game. Right. <laughs> but that was another one where it's just like, where where are they? Because they all are peppering him with bullets. And like, where did you all get ammunition? Oh, I do want to uh, shout out the very that the crashing flying ship scene where, that we were just talking about, Alien Covenant. It's like the same oh, like yeah. structure to that thing. Also, like impossible Mission Impossible Fallout had a way better crash scene than this thing. That's you know? on Mission Impossible Fallout's just better in every way, shape, yeah, and form. I true. love Mission Impossible. I, I, I was watching it on a plane. And I got stopped right when I found out that uh, spo- can I spoil part of it that Henry Cavill is a bad guy. I mean, that's in the that's trailer. pretty obvious I, I, in the I trailer. Get, yeah. I get it was in the trailer. A guy who could do arm thing. pumping things like that. Yeah, that thing guy. where he pulls up the sleeves. Oh, oh that's, that's right. so good. It's so good. His arm guns. Like villains have arm guns. <laughs> I'm so excited to talk about that movie in like three weeks. Oh, I won't be here. <laughs> you won't be here. Mm. I apologize. Instead, I have to talk about this. This is actually, <laughs> this, this was my suggestion. You suggested I know. I know. Every, <laughs> I'm sorry. I asked for suggestions, and everyone from the ATH crew is like, "We should do the Predator." I'm like, "I was never going to because it looked like garbage." But if everybody wants to, here we go. Yeah. Yeah. And 80, now we've done it. 80, 88 million dollars it cost to make. Uh, no, it's like 130. Wasn't it was 130. No, no, no uh, I don't remember. It was, 80, it, was 80, it, was 80, it was 88. Like it was 88, like, and then it made right, right, yeah. right 58 or something. Wow, yeah. that's 
I, I want to know that pitch. I want to know you go up to a millionaire. Shane Black, Shane Black went, I'm going to make a movie. And they're I'm like, make a movie oh, called okay. Predators. Like, oh, wow. Like, yeah, you remember you remember the first one? Yeah, yeah, that one was, I was really good. Oh, cool. It was great. Uh, yeah, it was like, but didn't that movie not make any money? It's like, yeah, but but that was before it was appreciated. It's got brand recognition It's now. got brand recognition now. Now it's like, how much money do you want? About $20 million? All right, cool. I'll give you that. Like, I, like, I want to see these pitches that these people go with. Like, how do you have that much money yeah. and have no no understanding of like, you know what? I'm going to ask somebody if this is a good idea to put my money in. It's kind of like, uh, say, like Blade Runner. Oh, Blade Runner was a box office disaster. You sure you want to make a sequel? Yeah, people love it now. I don't think they're going to see it, though. Yeah, it was <laughs> I'm going to make it three hours long. Yeah. Oh, they're definitely not going to see though. it. It was a good movie. Nobody saw it. Nobody saw yeah. it. Right. Um, before we go, I just want to point out just the very end of the movie. Did anybody else feel like this movie just stopped? Oh yeah, yeah. Like, but I was, I was suddenly happy we were like, "What? Oh, that was that was it. That was I don't even remember what the last line was, but it was like, was I it was, like he's wearing my suit. Yeah, well, and I then hope, it just I hope sort of forty one long, and then it just cut. Yeah. And you were like, "What? That was Is it? Is there a chance that he shows up in Avengers with that <laughs> weapon? Is that?" <laughs> Did, any, did are we not thinking a different Iron Man just pops out right there? I mean, it'd be pretty great. I mean, it's a one piece. That's yeah. total Tony Stark level technology. Good point. And and like, what it's if way more violent than Tony Stark technology though? But that's you. Tony Stark has missiles that don't wound. I mean, he has like the ultimate non. I'm just saying, weapons. like, we need to fight Thanos in a different way. Let's get a bracelet Predator, yeah. that does it all. Absolutely, I'm into this. Kind of looks like Fortnite, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, it's time for quotes, 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 quotes. Uh, I'm going to go first. I have two, one that I really like and one that just kind of, it felt like improv lines, and that's what I'm going to go with. Uh, it's after Olivia Munn, I want to say, gives the speech. Is it the Olivia Munn or the wife? I think it's the wife. She gives this whole speech about why everyone needs to go fight and fight the predator and kill the predator. And one guy stands up. He's like, yeah, it was a good speech. I'm going to go fight. <laughs> uh, and then then a bunch of other people like, whatever. And then uh, one guy's like, I'm going because he called me a pussy, not because of your speech. Oh, <laughs> net, net, <laughs> nettle, I nettles. Yeah, nettles, I, I nettles. didn't really like your speech. And then <laughs> as the next two guys stand up to leave, one of them goes, I liked your speech. And the other goes, I liked your couch. <laughs> and that was my favorite line. Of <laughs> that was probably improv. Yeah. Um, I, mine is really a sign. It's not an actual line someone said, <laughs> but outside the kid's school on the little, uh, sign for the school, it said, there's a sign that said like happy Halloween or something. And then it said, welcome parents and STDs. And I love that because I feel like that, that's actually, that is absolutely something. Oh, some, they tried to the shorten, they like tried students? to shorten students and they wrote <laughs> STDs and I loved it. It made me very happy. And it was that, like a blink and you'll miss it moment, but it was so good. That's to be one of those like, well, they're called STIs now. Do you think any? <laughs> Anyone will notice, <laughs> but they also did it in all caps. It was <laughs> STDs in all caps. Yeah, they'll which notice. I find believable. Like I really do oh, for believe sure. someone would put that on a sign outside of school and not realize what they were doing. So I liked. There's two moments where they try to clarify that the, they get pedantic about what a predator is, <sighs> and two characters make it. Olivia Munn and then one of the other guys. It's key. Key. Yeah, he gives you. That would be more like a hunter, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah, a sports hunter. Thank you. Oh no, no, no! It is. It is Tom from Bird Box. He he says it. That's not actually a predator. Yeah, yeah. So they they make the joke twice, and I just feel like that sums up the movie. That like, yeah. Let I mean, if we're gonna get this way, this movie sucks. Yeah. <laughs> like let's let's get to it. Like. Sure. Olivia Munn still says it. You're trying to figure out if I fucked an alien. Or, or, or if I fucked an alien. <laughs> if, if, somebody, if somebody fucked an alien. Like, she, I will, like, she is a fantastic uh, woman that plays aggression and, and holds her own. And she plays a very pow- good power position yeah. as an actress. Like, I, she, like a much from that, like, I don't think she was a good choice for a scientist in this. But somebody oh. who has incredible, like, like if you're like, hey, do you think she could kill a predator? Yeah, I don't think she would hesitate to shoot or like be violent because her quippiness, her like her demeanor, I love that part of it. And so when she nails those, you're like, did you say eat your pussy? Yeah. Like you know those kind of things. Like she does that better than most actors out there. Yeah, and, and she's great. And they gave her like nothing to do in this. Movie. She also doesn't seem remotely traumatized enough for having seen the entire science lab murdered uh, in front of her. She's just no like, one oh, does. Bloop, 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 bloop. Well, that's because she's a scientist on a bus. slash movie. You don't have time <laughs> to think when there's a predator on the loose. <laughs> uh, so review system today, I, I'm. this is going to be subjective, so it's going to be entirely on you. Internet won't help you. Movies that you think should have been better. Oh, God. 
Uh, I'm going to go first. I'm going to go with Valerian. Um, Valerian, the now two years ago movie um, from Luc Besson that was based on a comic book. And it was awesome. It was just balls to the wall, just colorful, awesome. And they just didn't even try to tell a story. And it was just lacking and kind of frustrating the whole way through. Because I'm sitting here going, this should be like the fifth element of our generation, especially because it's, you know, based sort of on the same stuff. And it was awesome. But this one just, it didn't hit a single mark and it was very disappointing. So it should have been better. Solo. Yeah. Uh, it had so much potential and it just, uh, it was just fanfic. We, we did a whole episode on it. Yeah. So these are, these are analogies to the, yeah. to, okay. Oh man. I wish, wish I had thought of Solo. Cause <laughs> yes, I agree. A thousand percent. Oh, uh, well, <laughs> Aquaman. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> oh gosh. I'm, you go. Cause I still got it. I'll go with Suicide Squad. Okay. Mm. And because on paper, that thing should have been just a, a, a romp, a fun romp. And instead, it was just garbage that looked pretty. <laughs> Did it look pretty? Some of the people looked oh. pretty. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, I, I'm going to say Justice League. No, I'll agree with that. I, yeah, because you have this guy that's like supposedly indestructible. And yeah, Justice League is. Is kind of that same thing of where like you get hyped up because you see all these different really cool characters and there's good moments. There's like Barry Allen does a fantastic job of being comical and funny, um, and and you know you have the kind of interaction with like raising Superman back and there's that kind of risk and all that, but it's just kind of it doesn't all make sense. Uh, plugs, plugity plug plug plugs. A dog's podcast. A dog's will podcast will be airing soon. Uh, I would love to be on it. I, excellent. Um, I see that you are a dog lover, not only because of your sweatshirt, but also you have a, a poop bag under your chair. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I thought she's bringing up how much dog hair is on my clothes right um, now. <laughs> so uh, it's gonna be uh, basically movies with dogs in them, where the dog is not the main character, and we're gonna go through like the plot of the movie according to the dog's perspective. Oh, um, so, I'm so interested. Yeah. What is the dog story here? Um, so. So I'm still trying to line up like what movie I'm going to do first. But Don't do a dog's should... purpose. <laughs> no, well, no, not a movie where dogs. I feel like that's one where like the dog is the central figure. Oh, okay. So we're, I'm or only a quick shout do... out to the movie that was completely played in front of Into the Spider-Verse, the dog movie that spoiled itself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What the fuck what was that called? Dog Journey. Journey home, a something? dog's journey. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. The trailer tells the whole fucking movie. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Sure does. Um. Uh, yeah, uh, so uh, stay tuned for that. We're just going to talk about dogs and movies, and it's going to be a blast. Uh, John, you also have something to plug? Yeah, yeah, we got a tabletop uh, podcast coming out uh, called Demon Days. It's taking the uh, tabletop games, uh, fantasy-based, and uh, you, uh, playing them with uh, all the fiendish demon characters that are in them. So, like, for example, this first uh, show is going to feature tieflings in the Ooh, Dungeons & Dragons world. It's, love a tiefling. Ooh. It's a party of tieflings, so friends and fiends together. <laughs> Uh, for me, always, every Monday, we are actually going to be a little bit behind, I think, because the holidays got kind of funky. Um, but we do Venture Bros, uh, Venture Brothers Podcast. Uh, we start recording again in three days, and we're about halfway through season three. Uh, and it's been great so far, and people have been really fun, and people have been reaching out to us, which has been awesome. So keep listening to that. You got me to start watching the show, and I'm on uh, still in the first season. It's going slow going, but... I don't know how you take that much time. If it wasn't for me having to like having to pace myself, uh -huh. I would have already watched the entire thing again. But now yeah, I'm just like, like if I can't watch the entire season of something in a day, then why bother? Yeah. Uh, next Saturday, the 19th, I'm doing a show at the comedy store at 7 30 PM. And the show's called bitch. It's great. That is um, in the, you said the 19th. So yeah. That's the 19th. Two days from now. This no. comes out on Thursday. Oh, this comes out on Thursday. Yeah. So yes. So two days from now, <laughs> but so anyway, so yeah, January nineteenth, uh, comedy store, seven thirty p.m. Show is called Bitch. Tammy Joe Deere and show. Uh, a bunch of people have been on, like Mark Marin, uh, Kevin Nealon's been there a couple of times. Had Elijah Schlesinger come in, um, but yeah, I do stand up, and you can come there, see me tell jokes, and see a bunch of other great comics. Uh, some you've heard of, some you haven't, but all of them are funny. It's why I love to do that show. Fun. Eric Chase Stevens on Instagram too. Perfect. Anything else you Wait, have? Eric J. Chase. 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 Chase okay. Like running. Like he's going to chase you. Be, be, uh, follow was, me. Would, she likes the prey thing. So. Yeah. I didn't say I like it. I just said it was a kink. 
Ah, there is an alleyway, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> that is how you get here. Uh, that's it for us here today. Oh, articles. Articles on the website. Oh, articles. Yes, we do have more. Read articles that coming. shit. ATHpod.com. Uh, ATHpod.com. Matt Dykes is officially part of the ATH family. Right. Nice. So he will be uh, having articles, is it every Friday or we got, most Fridays? You know, like mo- most 25% Fridays. more Brit. No, that's the yeah. wrong number. But we got some percentage more British. Yes, we did. <laughs> some percentage. <laughs> uh, so thanks, Matt. Uh, his stuff 20? has been great so far. Uh, Matt is from England. He's from no, Leeds. I, I got that he was from England from, <laughs> from, yeah, from her saying the British percentage went up and yeah. you added a person. I did that. I was more trying to figure out how many people are on the ATH system. Well, it's, it's one, two, three, four, five. I guess he... And Owen Ryan would be... 16.6. Yeah, 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 so yeah. 15, 14.7. Whoa. What? You're smarty pants. I'm smarty. All right, okay. Bye. 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 <laughs>